adventurers are hoping to make history by becoming the first disabled team ever to complete what's called the Grand Slam Challenge. So it involves walking unaided to both the North and South Poles, just take that in for a minute, <laughs> attempting to climb the world's highest mountain, uh, Mount Everest in Nepal, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, and Mount Denali in North America, which is renowned for having the world's worst weather. Well, not only that, they will also have to endure the minus 70 degree temperature of the Vincent Massive in Antarctica, reach the peak of Mount Elbrus near Russia, Mount Kosciuszko in Australia, and take on the near vertical slopes of Karsten's Pyramid in Indonesia. But their mission will be beginning in January, where they attempt South America's highest peak, which is Mount Aconcagua. After, I didn't even know half those places existed no. in the world. <laughs> Here they it's are, amazing. our heroes. That yeah. list of things that you're doing is Martin incredible. Hewitt, Terry Byrne, uh, Sean Winder and racehorse trainer Kelderwood. Good morning to all of you. Morning. Uh, this is the sort of rest you're getting, isn't it? This is the final sort of sit down before you start your massive challenge in the new year. Where did it all start from and why? It started in 2011 when I walked to the North Pole with His Royal Highness Prince Harry raising money for Walking with the Wounded. Um, and that experience basically provided me an opportunity to focus uh, during rehabilitation in something. Uh, and that was quite powerful. Uh, I think when you go through a life-changing injury or illness, having a positive focus in, in that time is really key uh, to transition. And I want to really do two things. One, provide the opportunity to other people. And two, um, scale it up a little bit. And take it a little mm. further. A little bit? Just a bit. <laughs> and what about the whole prospect of doing this? I mean, you know, Terry, when it comes to sort of thinking about, right, you know, we've done this, we've done that, this is what we've got ahead of us. For anybody else, it just seems insurmountable, but particularly for all of you who I know have got injuries as well to overcome these kind of challenges. Yeah, for me, the opportunity to do it is, um, is unbelievable, to be part of a you know, world record breaking team to, to summit the seven summits in the seven continents in the North and South Pole. And as well, when I uh, got on it just after injury, and uh, the opportunity to um, to show what disabled people can do. Yeah. It's just something that I needed to do and be part of. Mm. Yeah, and the three of you were injured in Afghanistan, weren't you, in all separate incidents? Yep. And Kelda, you, you were a racehorse trainer. That's right, yes. Uh, and was it a bale of hay? Yeah, it was a bale of hay lidge, so they weigh about a ton. Um, oh fell off the top of the stack and crushed me underneath. Wow. And what is it like training with these guys? Because I know you've already started and you <laughs> haven't actually you haven't done this challenge yet, have you? Some no. of these guys already have, yeah. Do you know what? They're a, a great bunch. There's a lot of banter goes on and you have to kind of get stuck in, but uh, I couldn't ask to be with a better bunch of guys. And I think how much of a difference has it made for you having a challenge like this? Because I think you found it hard, didn't you, after your injury? Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my focus had been on the Paralympics in Rio and then I failed to be selected for that and I was really struggling after that because I'd, I'd lost my goal, I'd lost my focus. So getting involved with this was just incredible to give me that reason to train, reason to, to push myself, reason to kind of feel alive again, which was yeah. fantastic. And Sean, what sort of, what response have you had from people? Because I, we have, I think we have a, an enormous respect for our Paralympians and disabled athletes in this country and I think that things have really changed. Have you noticed that I suppose that, that people's attitudes are genuinely changing aren't they to what disability means for people and how life genuinely can get better or continue? Yeah I think people you know they, uh, they realize that you can still do stuff even you know if you are you know, disabled or injured in any certain way there's no limit you know of, of what you can do anymore I don't think. Yeah. Do people look at you as if you're a bit nuts, though, when you sort of go through the list of what you're doing and how it's going to be, the temperatures that you're going to endure? Well, people think I'm nuts anyway. Oh, no, no matter so that's what, all right, so. then. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin, talk to us about the whole, you know, the, the team aspect of it, the challenge, because what is it then about coming together, about really pushing yourself? You know, this is not just physically, is it, but mentally as well, to all, you know, overcome the disabilities, to be able to do something like this? Yeah, certainly. We were trying to, in essence, We've got an ethos, uh, and the ethos is trying to demonstrate what can be achieved. Um, but moreover, it's more about, in my opinion, it's more about actually the other skill sets that people get out of it. It's all about organisation, planning. You've got to go and pitch the sponsors. There's so much to mm -hmm. this um, that uh, you're developing new skill sets at the same time, which I think is, is key. You know, I went from being in a situation where I had a lot of responsibility in the Army as a young officer yeah. at a very early point in life to, you know, lie in the hospital bed with nothing to do other than try and survive. Mm. And that is a huge cultural shift. And to try and get back into a, a, a way of life again where you're, you're, you're taking on responsibility, you're taking on challenges, you're taking on a new role, um, it, it's 
it can be a challenge for people. Yeah. And I think having something like this, which requires so many different skill sets to be brought together in one to achieve success, is great. And then on the hill, teamwork is key because the places we're going to, you know, there's no amount of rescue coming to get you no, out. No, it's not like you can yeah. ring someone and say, can yeah. you come and pick us up? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely we wish you the very best of luck. Hats off to you all. It is incredible. And, and fingers crossed it all goes smoothly. We look forward to hearing about it when you come. One last thing. What do you think of the fish there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was distracted yeah. by your sideburns, I have to say. I mean, that is that part warm. of the challenge as well? Well, yeah, I thought I'd start I'm, now I'm then by the end of it. Oh. <laughs> I don't blame you, to be honest. The teamwork there, Kelda, you know.